from inside Rogers Center in downtown Toronto. MLB the show has interleague action for you this afternoon. It's the New York Mets and the Toronto Blue Jays. And now, all right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. Toronto Blue Jays. Base is empty with two away. And next is the designated hitter, Jay Mack. Drilled out towards left center field. That's well struck. And in one hops the wall. Around first, heading for two. And he starts his afternoon off right with a double. He's been swinging it really well lately. That Solid good. swing from start to end. On time with everything. Really good balance. Nice extension. And he met it out front for the line drive knock. And at second here with two away. Here's some real power at the plate. Pete Alonso. Two outs and one in scoring position. Swing and a ground ball out to short. Bichette throws the first in time. And that takes care of Alonso. And that is the inning. One hit, one left. Now the Blue Jays will get their chance. No score. And we're back. And our pitcher in this game, Jay Mack. And Singy, we were talking earlier about how he's doing a great job navigating through tough spots. I've just been so impressed with Leading when up, it seems Toronto. like there's more pressure, he's more yeah, calm man. and settles in. He's done an incredible Here, job with runners in scoring position. Most guys, they get a little tight, they start to aim the baseball, but for some reason, he gets looser, the ball comes out of his hand with more life, and he's able to wiggle off the hook of you know, tough situations and get his team back in the dugout. And a pitch. Off the plate, ball one. That one finds the zone, and the count is one and two. This guy at the dish excels in two strike counts. Got to be careful with him out there on the mound. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Got a pitch to hit right there with two strikes, but just couldn't get a piece. I tell you what, that screwball is so unique, and it's so rarely seen. I, I think it can be tough for any hitter just to get a piece of it, no matter where it's placed. As a hitter, you're just not used to seeing a pitch moving that way and getting on the same plane as it comes into the hitting zone. Isaiah kiner falefa up to the plate. There's a strike. Connor Falefa, a former Gold oh, Glove winner, 29 years old, usually a third baseman, but today starting in right. One out, base is empty. Well, he's going to get a totally different angle in the way that he sees the game in this one, going from third base all the way out to right field. Sure hope he doesn't try to overthrow. You can hurt your arm out there if you're not careful. And the righty deals. Up the middle, a dive, nice stop, over to first. And very nicely done for the out. Well, you can see right there, he looks very hurt. comfortable going Not to the backhand. Stop. Nice diving oh. stop, gets up to complete the play. Yeah. That'll fire the team up for sure. Cole Bichette up to the dish. Three hits last night. So he was a big factor in getting that win. And that drops in for a strike. Two outs, base is empty. Right through there for a strike. Oh, this guy's so comfortable hitting with two strikes. Even a good pitch early in the at-bat. If he's not ready to pull the trigger, he's not worried if he gets to an 0-2 count.
swings and misses struck him out down in order go the Blue Jays we played an inning no score. And welcome back to the ballpark. And now the first baseman, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Singing, he's a guy that covers both sides of the plate about as well as anyone in the sport. How difficult is that to do? Well, just look at the back of my bubblegum card. You'll see how hard it is. These guys are great, man. They have the ability to look out there, but also to be able to turn on the inside pitch. Those that can really sharpen things on the outer half, those are the ones that become elite. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., that swing so reminiscent of his dad. Lots of pop. And the 0-2. Packs and misses. It's a strikeout. Well, he's got great strikeout stuff on the mound, doesn't right. he? Yeah. Double-digit strikeouts in his last start, and he's yep. just yeah. racking them up again in this one. This guy can really dominate a game out there. Not a fun assignment for any lineup. So now Turner in on that right side. On the corner for a strike. It's 0-1. Nothing, nothing here in the bottom of the second. And that's a base hit. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. He needed that one. It's been a tough stretch at the that plate lately. That pretty much split the zone down the middle, and those are the ones where you got to make them pay. And now the catcher comes up to him. Alejandro Kirk, good defender. He's been inconsistent offensively. First pitch, and he just misses. And here it comes. Swing and a miss. And it's one and one. And that's in there at the knees. Love how vocal the umpire is today. No doubt in the hitter's mind, the catcher's mind, and even the pitcher's mind as to the conviction in the call. Caught him looking for the K. Wow, that's a tough call for the hitter, but the pitcher will take that all day long. Not quite in the strike zone, but he found a spot that the umpire is going to, at least for now, allow him to get that call. So hitters are going to have to make an adjustment, but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can. And now it's Dalton Varsho. Popped up, foul territory behind the plate. Alvarez brings it in for the third out. So no runs here in a base hit, no errors, and one left. We head on now to the top of the third. No score. Hey, your pitch, your pitch. Up next for the Mets, the designated hitter. Yay! Matt. And there's a foul ball. Two down, nobody on. Line drive. And that'll do it. Mets go down quickly, and we're still knotted at zero.
set for the bottom Leading of the third. Now it's the D H. Santiago Espinal. Santiago Espinal. To work right through there for a strike. Check swing, no appeal, ball one. That's big right there, being able to check your swing. Think about the count swing. Instead of 0 2, he's sitting 1 1 against a really good arm. That one finds the corner, and the count, one and two. Ground ball right side, Mauricio. To first, leadoff hitter gone in the third. Batting up, the second baseman. And Rafael. stepping in is the speedy Lantigua. Rafael Lantigua. And a base hit up the middle. And that turns the lineup over. Went up there looking to be aggressive and got something he could handle. Really nice job staying up the middle with his approach. He didn't try to do too much with the pitch. Just shot it through the infield. And now let's see if they force some action with good wheels on the bases. Here's Kevin Kiermeyer. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Still tied at zero. Last of the third. Runner on the move. Swing and a miss. No Safe in second, and that was not close. You know what? I like the aggressiveness right there. It looks like it's going to be tough to score in this one. Really good pitching so far. So why not try to put some pressure on them and see if you can steal the bag, get in the scoring position? Man at second. Fights that one away, and the count remains 0-2. Matt, one of the best strikeout pitchers in the game, and that certainly is a benefit to him when he's in a spot like this. The pitch. Cuts on it and misses. That's a strikeout. And that's his 200th strikeout of the season. Well, they get the strikeout there, and what kind of stood out to me was that they weren't shying away from contact. Every single pitch was in the strike zone, and that tells me they wanted to attack him, and it paid off. And now the right fielder, Isaiah kiner falefa 0 for 1 so far. Yeah, if you're going to be in the game in high leverage situations, you've got to be able to get the swing and miss and put hitters away. And that's in for a strike. Runner at second, two down. Ground ball left side. Toss to Alonzo, and the inning is over. Blue Jays held in check, and we are still scoreless. Back here at Rogers Center, and now the shortstop, Bo Bichette. This guy makes great contact, one of the best in the game at putting bat on ball. He's got such quick hands, and he's gaining pitch recognition. That keeps him square to the plate. There's a good chance that his bat stays in the zone a long time, and that produces solid contact consistently. Next offering is in for a strike. And this guy's got a great feel for his breaking ball today. Going to now. And that one hammered. Marte, drop step, going back. Pulls it in on the warning track. 
Up next for the Blue Jays, the first baseman, Vladimir. Here's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Scoreless here, but now he's got to deal with a guy who's got some power. Got to be careful when you're talking about a hitter with this type of slug and these type of home run totals. I love the fact that we've seen both Vladimir Guerrero and Vladdy Jr. win the home run derby. They're the first father-son duo to ever win it. Vladdy back in 2007 and Vladdy Jr. in 2023. Even though his dad didn't give him any advice for the event other than to go out there and hit home runs. Yeah, the right hater deals. Swung on, belted. Nimmo going back on it. Pulls it in on the warning track. Now batting, third baseman, Justin. Here's Turner now. Turner. One for one with a single so far. Turner, multi-time All-Star, 39 oh years God. old, and he was drafted in the seventh round back in 2006. Two down, nobody on. Here in the third and final game of the series. Comes up empty. More and more guys are looking to slug regardless of the count. In this situation, we'll keep a close eye on his approach. And down on strikes. And it's a three up, three down inning. One, two, three, go the Blue Jays. Still no score. The batter, the designated hitter. Jay Matt. Out to short. And it finds its way through for a hit. Coming home. He'll score easily. And they're up by three. Now batting. The first baseman, Pete Alonzo. Two outs, runner at first. Here's Pete Alonzo. <laughs> Two outs. On a line, base hit. Lead runner touches second, headed for third. And now they'll have runners on the corners with two away. I don't think that pitch would have been called a strike, but he did such a nice job of pulling his hands tight to the body and just getting enough of the barrel on it to be hard enough back up the middle for a knock. So two on with two away. Now up to hit, Francisco Lindor. The pitch. Here's a rip to short, but he's there for the third out. Three runs for him here, and they move ahead. Home half of the fifth coming up. It's the Mets three, and the Jays nothing. Back now in Toronto, ready to go for the last half of the inning. Stepping in, Alejandro Kirk. Matt back to work on the ground to the left into the outfield base hit so a runner aboard to start the inning well that started and ended pretty quickly no messing around right there just found a way to slap that ball down the third baseline that's really excellent back control and it kind of goes back to all those drills you see hitters do off the tee where it's placed in different spots. That was just nice. Varsho in the box now. No balls and a strike. Kirk gets his lead at first with nobody out. Swing and a miss as he was out front that time. Got him swinging. Picks up strikeout number seven. Well, he made pretty quick work of him right there. You look at the, the sequence, Number everything ten. down at the yes, knees and below. And some guys are good no ball hitters, but right there, they That's clearly had a plan to pound that part of the zone, and he wasn't able to put up much of a fight. Next to hit, Santiago Espinal.
on its way to the corner. And that is a foul ball. Man at first one away. Next offering is in for a strike. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Slider got him for strike three. Well, interesting. He's looking very comfortable out of the stretch after giving up the leadoff single. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. So they haven't been able to move that runner off, get him into scoring position, and try to have a better chance of scoring. I tell you, good job so far on the mound. He just needs one more out. And now for the Jays, Rafael Lantigua singled and stole a base his first time. And there's a strike of the outside corner, and it's 0-1. Well, this looks like it's going to be a wasted opportunity. It's frustrating when you get the leadoff man on, but you can't get him into scoring position. They're going to need a big knock. Try to put something up on the board. Next offering in there for a strike. No balls, two strikes. The Mets leading by three. Last half of inning number five. and miss struck him out and that is that one left for Toronto they trail it here three nothing and we're back and now the center fielder Kevin Kiermaier you talk about elite defensive players especially in the middle of the diamond and this guy is at the top of the list and you played behind guys, and they loved having your speed out there defensively. One of the things that we talk about is how much pitchers enjoy having those elite defenders behind them. And that drops in for a strike. Boog, and the one thing about that is speed never goes in a slump, and defense shouldn't either. Hitting-wise, you can struggle, you can lose your mechanics, but the thing that you can do consistently every single game is play great defense if you're talented in that way, and this is what this guy does. Toss to Alonzo. One up, one down. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air, lets the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Now it's the right fielder, Isaiah Kiner Falefa. Right through there for a strike. Base is empty one away here in the bottom of the sixth. Well, on the mound, very efficient. Able to produce an outcome, it seems like, within the third or fourth pitch of just about every at bat. Lindor. Over to first. And a couple of quick outs. The batter number 11. Shortstop. Whoa. Bichette. Two outs, base is empty. And the batter now, Bo Bichette. He's got the power, but great contact skills. One of the best contact hitters in the game. That one finds the zone, and that's strike one. And a big swing and a miss. This guy's pounding the zone. Hitters don't have time to think in between pitches. Two down, nobody on. Got him. And it's a 1-2-3 inning. Nothing doing for the Blue Jays. They're on the short end of a 4-0 score. Man at first and stepping in for New York, Jay Mack. So clutch, you could argue that he's been this team's MVP this year. Nice stop. Throws from the seat of his pants. There's one. Double play. That was some defensive wizardry. Set for the last half of the seventh. And now, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. The right-hander back to work. Strike one. Well, these Jays just lacking discipline at the plate in this ball game. They've been chasing pitches outside the zone all game, and it's led to some frustrating moments. They've been fooled quite a bit today. And that's in for a strike. No ball, two strikes. <laughs> Swing 
swings and misses. And they get the leadoff hitter in the seventh. Wow, short work to send him pack in to start the inning, and no messing around either. All three pitches were in the strike zone, attack mode all the way, and that's pretty impressive given the pop he was dealing with at the plate. And it'll bring up Justin Turner, hitting better against right-handers this year, so some reverse splits there. He's controlling things out there on the mound, not messing around at all. He's been in attack mode since the very start. When a guy's throwing a lot of first pitch strikes as a hitter, you got to be ready to hit. Now, that's not going to help you get deep into his pitch count and into the bullpen, but you got to take what he's offering that day. Toss to Alonzo. Turner is out. Now batting, catcher Alejandro Kirk. Alejandro Kirk next up for the Blue Jays one for two clips the corner one one swings through that one for strike two no that's that start right there he threw it extremely well talk about just a ton of breaks so tough to get that barrel to Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. Blue Jays go down in order. They're down 4 nothing. Back here at Rogers well, Center. Well, bottom of the eighth. Eight. Here's the left no fielder. Left field. Dalton Varsho. Okay. The wind of the pitch. And that clips the inside corner. So he's back out to begin the eighth. Been a really nice outing for him so far, Singy. He's thrown the ball really well. Kept hitters off balance, and he's been very efficient with that pitch count. But at this point, even though it's been relatively low, you start keeping an eye on it to make sure that he doesn't have any fatigue and injuring himself. Right-hander kicks deals. And they'll do it again. No action in the bullpen, though. Looks like they're going to let him stay out there. Gonna count one and two. Got him swinging. Had him way out in front of the knuckleball there. That the thing batter. just Number floats 10. and dances yes, to the plate. And as a hitter, it kind of feels like it'll never get there. You've got to try to find a way to stay on that back leg and just let it travel as deep as possible. Tough to do though. On the ground at first. He steps oh. on the bag. Two up, two down. Now batting. The second baseman, Rafael. Lon two outs, base is empty. Rafael Lantigua next up for the Blue Jays. Struck out on just three pitches last time. That's in there. Going one. The Blue Jays down by four here in the rubber match of this three game series. And that one clips the corner. And down on strikes he goes. Three up, three down, inning over. Nothing doing for the Blue Jays. They trail it here, four nothing. And it's scoring position with two away. So up next for New York, Jay Mack. And a foul ball. The 0 1. Ripped to third, but handled. And that'll end the inning. Bottom of the ninth coming up, and we'll see if he can complete the shutout after the break.
And welcome back to the ballpark. Bottom of the ninth. Now here's the leadoff man for the Blue Jays, Kevin Kiermeyer. Kiermeyer. The pitch. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Well, they've kept him pretty quiet in this series. Still doesn't have a knock. I know you want to get that first knock out of the way. Maybe more will come. But you got to give some credit to the pitching staff. They've had a great plan against him. Swing and a miss. And it's nothing in two. And down on strikes. And now one away. And there's another strikeout, and those are just yeah, continuing yeah. to pile up. Well, His right confidence here. level has right got here. to be dropping. He's got to find right a way to make an adjustment move, get back on track. His team needs him. Smoked on the ground a second. Mauricio oh. with the throw to first. That takes care of Connor Falefa. Shortstop. So it's their last chance in this one. Bo Bichette next up for the Blue Jays. Went down looking on three pitches last time. Let's see if he can be a little more aggressive right here. And that's outside. And that's ball one. I mean, his pitch efficiency, ability to get ahead and count, at times pitch to contact, let the defense work behind him. That's why he's still in the game here in the ninth inning. And it's fouled away. You just don't see it that much anymore. A guy being this efficient and getting this deep into the game. I wonder if he's going to be able to close it out. There's just something about. Out to short. Lindor. On to first. Oh. Ball game. And the Mets with the rubber match of this three-game series. It has become increasingly difficult to throw a complete game shutout because of all of the offensive prowess that these hitters are showing around the league today. But he had total command of this game, and he saw it all the way through to the end. Nice win.